Who was Lot's wife? Why was she turned into a pillar of salt? There is a woman that Jesus referenced in Luke. Remember Lot's wife. Luke chapter 17, verse 32. Lot's wife is an unnamed woman mentioned in the Bible very few times. She is a woman that met an untimely end due to her disobedience of the word of the Lord. The truth is, we know more about the story surrounding the death of Lot's wife than anything else about her. In Genesis chapter 13, Abram, Sarai, later renamed Abraham and Sarah by God, and Lot depart Egypt with their riches. The majority of the possessions belonged to Abram, who was extremely rich in animals, silver, and gold, according to Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. They went south and built an altar between Bethel and Hai. However, they quickly learned that the land was not suitable for them because Lot also had flocks, herds, and tenants. Lot chooses Sodom. Conflict developed between Abram's and Lot's shepherds. Abram did not want any hard feelings, so he made a proposal to Lot. Genesis chapter 13, verse 7 through 12. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zor. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. Lot studied the country and chose the Jordan plain because it had easy access to water. Lot pitched his tent toward Sodom, whereas Abram dwelled in Canaan. In verse 13, we are informed that the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Lot took with him his wife on this journey. The central topic of this episode is the separation of Abram and Lot. Hitherto, Abram and Lot have worked together amicably as relatives should. Lot is presumed to share in the promise of divine protection and blessing which comes to those who identify themselves with Abram. It may be that Lot was originally regarded as Abram's heir, but here, as a result of a quarrel between Abram and Lot's herdsmen, Lot moves out of Abram's orbit. Indeed, he moves out of, or at least to the very frontier of the land of promise, to the cities of the plain, whose inhabitants were great sinners. Thus, what he viewed as a great step forward was his ruin, for these cities were destined to destruction. Following their split, the Lord promised Abram and his descendants all the country he could see from east to west and south to north. Following extensive political unrest and warfare between the rulers of the neighboring kingdoms, the kings of both lands departed and took all the goods and all their food. As a result, the economies of both Sodom and Gomorrah deteriorated. Lot, Abram's nephew, was captured by the kings during their departure. When Abram learned of his nephew's captivity, he pursued them all the way to Dan. He and his armed servants saved Lot and his belongings. Melchizedek, king of Salem, blessed Abram and acknowledged him as of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. He thanked Abram for his assistance in delivering his people. The king of Sodom, on the other hand, demanded the restitution of all his possessions and people. Abram told the king that the only prizes he acquired 
were for the people to eat while traveling. Sodom and Gomorrah are destroyed. Even though Abraham and Sarah, as they were known at the time, were getting older, the Lord altered him about the escalating evil and impending wrath of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham saw three men. At least two of the men were angels. Abraham gave prompt attention to the needs of his guests, and he bowed low to the ground. He politely addressed one of his guests as my lord and called himself your servant, a common way of speaking when addressing a superior. He acted as if they would be doing him a favor if they allowed him to serve them. He prepared a lavish meal for them and stood nearby assuming a servant's posture to meet their every wish. Genesis chapter 18, verse 16 through 33. Then the men rose up from there and looked down toward Sodom. And Abraham was walking with them to send them off. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do, since Abraham will surely become a great and mighty nation, and in him all the nations of the earth will be blessed? For I have chosen him so that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice, so that the Lord may bring upon Abraham what he has spoken about him. And the Lord said, The outcry of Sodom and Gomorrah is indeed great, and their sin is exceedingly grave. I will go down now and see if they have done entirely according to its outcry, which has come to me. And if not, I will know. Then the men turned away from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham was still standing before the Lord. Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you indeed sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous and the wicked are treated alike. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth deal justly? So the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare the whole place on their account. And Abraham replied, Now behold, I have ventured to speak to the Lord, although I am but dust and ashes. Suppose the fifty righteous are lacking five, will you destroy the whole city because of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. He spoke to him yet again and said, Suppose forty are found there. And he said, I will not do it on account of the forty. Then he said, O oh, may the Lord not be angry, and I shall speak. Suppose thirty are found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Now behold, I have ventured to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. And he said, I will not destroy it on account of the twenty. Then he said, O oh, may the Lord not be angry, and I shall speak only this once. Suppose ten are found there. And he said, I will not destroy it on account of the ten. As soon as he had finished speaking to Abraham, the Lord departed, and Abraham returned to his place. Abraham was certain Lot would have at least commanded his children and his household and kept the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. Lot was sitting at the entrance of Sodom when two angels approached him and offered them accommodation for the night. They rejected because they wanted to spend the night in the street. They eventually agreed and followed Lot, who fed them. That night, however, all the men of Sodom heard about the angels and surrounded Lot's house. Where are the men who came to you tonight? They encircled Lot's house. Bring them out so we may have them. Instead, Lot reacted by offering his two daughters. The men of Sodom persevered in their efforts to reach the angels who appeared to be men. The angels drew Lot inside and locked the door, then struck the evil ones outside with blindness to the point where they couldn't find the house's door. The angels told Lot to gather his family and leave Sodom as soon as possible. Genesis chapter 19 verse 13 
for we are about to destroy this place, because their outcry has become so great before the Lord, that the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Lot forewarned his sons-in-law, but they insulted him and ignored his advice. As daylight approached, the angels reminded Lot that judgment was imminent and that he needed to remove his wife and daughters from the city. Lot and his family flee Sodom. Flee for your lives, one of the angels exclaimed as they fled the city. Do not look back or halt anywhere in the plain. Get to the mountains or you'll be washed away. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire from heaven on Sodom and Gomorrah and overthrew those towns and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and all that grew on the ground as the cities were being demolished. Genesis chapter 19 verse 26 But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Lot and his two daughters escaped to Zor, a city in the adjacent mountains. The oldest daughter became aware of her father's age and the absence of her mother. With these thoughts in mind, she proposed to her sister that they get their father drunk and lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. Lot did not comprehend what was happening since he was drunk, and his daughters each slept with him in turn. In this way, each daughter conceived a son who became the fathers of the Moabites and the Ammonites. According to Bible interpretations, Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt for looking back for breaking the instruction not to look back. Her actions indicate that she sympathized with the people of Sodom and her failure to evade God's wrath serves as a stark warning to others. What is the significance of the story of Lot's wife? Interestingly, the name of Lot's wife is not provided in the Bible, even though her existence contains numerous life lessons. We are not told why she turned back to gaze at the city while it was being destroyed. Lot's wife had every opportunity to live. Although Lot's wife is not named, we can make certain assumptions about her. She was familiar with God whom Lot served, and she had Abraham as an uncle and might have learned a lot from him. She could have been present when her husband was kidnapped by Keter Laomer and saved by God's strength. She was exceedingly blessed to have God's angels in her home. They even took her by the hand and led her out of Sodom. But what good did it all do her in the end? All of God's grace was wasted on her. There are several key takeaways here. Number one, it is possible to be lost forever, even though you are religious and have every opportunity to do right. You can come from a pleasing family, have many spiritual advantages, and still be lost. Number two, you can leave the world and begin on the correct path, but you will be eternally lost if you turn back. You are in charge of your own beliefs. But why did God care if she glanced over her shoulder at Sodom? Number one, looking back was an indication of doubt. She had to confess to God the penalty and fate of Sodom. He had spoken and he would carry out his promise. We may declare that we believe God, yet when the test comes, we waver and look back. God invites us to put our trust in Him and turn our attention to spiritual matters. Number two, looking back was disobedience because God had clearly instructed not to look back. Go to the mountains and don't come back. There was no time allotted to hear all of her excuses or reasons for disobeying. That is why we struggle with the lessons of Uzzah, Ananias, and Sapphira. They expose justice for what it is and reveal God's stance on disobedience. Number three, to look back may have revealed her true attachment to Sodom. Was she displaying a love for what she was leaving behind? Her body was leaving, but her heart was still in Sodom. Luke chapter 17, verse 26 through 30, New American Standard Bible. And just as it happened in the days of Noah, so will it also be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, and they were being given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same as happened in the days of Lot. They were eating, they were drinking, 
they were buying, they were selling, they were planting, and they were building. But on the day that Lot left Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just the same on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. James chapter 4 verse 4 Do we want to be friends with the rest of the world? This does not imply giving up everything in the world. This world represents everything that is opposed to God, the wickedness that was once a part of your life. Lessons from Lot's Wife's Punishment Lot's wife's punishment was terrible, abrupt, and irreversible. She was denied another chance to flee when she looked back. All mercy that had previously been extended was abruptly withdrawn. The Bible does not go into detail about what happens, and it is exposed as a natural result of her decision. There will come a time when all of your opportunities to obey God will be gone. Some individuals scoff at preaching and teaching that refers to hell or any impending judgment. They perceive it as scare tactics intended to frighten children and fools. We are too wise to believe it. More than any other subject, Jesus spoke about hell. His words inspired the images of gnashing teeth and unquenchable fire. Consider the innumerable examples of people who had the opportunity to do the right thing and then lost that opportunity forever. Pharaoh, Nadab and Abihu, Korah and his gang, Judas Iscariot, and so on. To warn people about hell would be to fail to convey the entire truth, making us culpable in God's judgment of sinners. God appointed the prophet Ezekiel to be a watchman over his people. God provided him with a detailed work description. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 2 through 9. New American Standard Bible. Son of man, speak to the sons of your people, and say to them, If I bring a sword upon a land, and the people of the land take one man from among them, and make him their watchman, and he sees the sword coming upon the land, and blows the horns, and warns the people, then someone who hears the sound of the horn, but does not take warning, and a sword comes and takes him away, his blood will be on his own head. He heard the sound of the horn, but did not take warning. His blood will be on himself. But had he taken warning, he would have saved his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming, and does not blow the horn, and the people are not warned, and a sword comes and takes a person from them, he is taken away for his wrongdoing. But I will require his blood from the watchman's hand. Now as for you, son of man, I have appointed you as a watchman for the house of Israel, so you will hear a message from my mouth and give them a warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you wicked person, you will certainly die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked about his way, that wicked person shall die for his wrongdoing, but I will require his blood from your hand. But if you on your part warn a wicked person to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he will die for his wrongdoing. But you have saved your life. Lot's wife's lessons are still relevant. God is still ready to condemn all men, and his word is still to not look back. Will you flee God's vengeance in Jesus' blood? Let God's angels take you out of this city to safety?